Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. All right, Shalom, Most High Christ Bless is Captain Ezra. Officer Azaziah. And we're just going to go over a quick class. This is called Fringe Check, Fringe Check Fornication. And the reason it's Fringe Check Fornication is because we wear fringes every day. Those that have repented come into the truth. One of the first laws that we start to keep is fringes. We break our necks to get fringes. But once we get the fringes and we're wearing them every day, we tend to forget about the fringes. Now it's just a fashion. Now we just have them on our garments. We're not really focused on what the, the true purpose of the fringes are. We're just wearing them. So this is going to be a series of classes with the uh, fringes and how we should keep these in the forefront of our minds every day instead of just putting it on as a fashion statement or letting our light shine, but we're not thinking about that light. So let's start with the book, and obviously, let's start with the book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments Wait, of the... Wait, I just want you to, I want you to really... Stick that word. Go back. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember. And remember. So again, so like we had our fringes on, but a lot of times we forget about them. But And that means if I'm forgetting about the fringe, that means I'm, the fringe is used to help me remember the law. So that means if I'm forgetting about the fringe itself, then that means the law is starting to fall further and further back into the, from the front of my mind to the back of my mind. And when that happens, that's a recipe for me to go off. So read that again. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. And do them. Come on. And that ye seek not after your own heart, and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. Come on. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. So now, what we should be doing is we should be thinking about our fringes. We should be looking at the fringes and we should be saying, this represents a law. This law, this fringe represents dietary law. This fringe may represent a moral law. This fringe may represent a civil law and so forth and so on. Instead of just being, oh, this looks good with this shirt. Or I'm going to put this particular fringe with this particular shirt. Or the sister, I'm going to put this particular fringe with this particular ribbon. And it's going to match the head wrap. And now it's just a fashion. Now it's just something that we're doing. Instead of doing this, which is using it to remember the law and do them. And a lot of times what you ask is people will go out and commit fornication. That's in the truth with fringes on. That shows you that they were not focused on those fringes. They was not thinking about the fringes and use them for what they are meant for, which is to make you remember the law and do it. You got something? Oh, okay. All right. So let's go back. Let's go to the same chapter. Go to verse 29. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 29. 
Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Come on. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. He says, when you sin presumptuously, that means you just presume that you were able to do certain things. He says, that person hates the Lord. That person that does something like that, they have a, a distaste for the Lord. The Lord is reproached in their sight because they're acting on their own will instead of the will that the Most High set forth for. So watch this. Let's go to Le Leviticus 18 and 1 because this particular fringe that I'm focused on, and this is the way we should start to think about it. Think about them fringe for fringe. Like a lot of times when you have fringes, you, you have different types of fringes, different styles of fringes. But it's usually a lot of them. That means because it's a lot of laws, and we should be focused on that in it, in, on it in that way. So now, when I'm looking at a certain fringe, I should be. And sometimes, like you play with your fringes, it's like right there. You should be. This is a law. That's a law. I'm playing with the law. No, I don't mean like that. But I'm, I have a law. This is a law in my hand, and I should think about it that way. So read that. Leviticus, I want 18 and verse 1. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So when he brought us out of Egypt, he gave us this law of fringes. What? To remember his laws and also to forget the laws or the, or the ways of the Egyptians that we learned. Because we was there over 400 years. And we picked up a lot of their customs. So he had to correct those things. And he gave us fringes to help us remember that, listen, I'm dropping those customs. And I'm picking up the customs of the Most High. I'm picking up the laws, statutes, and commandments that he put forth. So that's what the purpose of them are. But drop down to verse 6. Let's, let's examine this because we're dealing with the fringe that represents fornication. So let's get a little more on fornication. Leviticus 18 and 6. None of you shall excuse me. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. So a lot of us may say, well, I don't do that. I don't go after my first cousin. I don't go after my, my niece. I don't go after my nephew. You're not, okay, that's fine. So maybe this one missed you. Come on. Verse 7. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. Okay, somebody may say, well, I don't do that either. But guess what? There's many forms of fornication. But I'm going to show you something. Drop down to verse 17. Verse 17. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Na oh, wait a minute. See, some of these brothers in the world, they was like, yeah, I was a player. I had this one and that one. No, you cannot have multiple women. You cannot have multiple women. But watch this. I want you to remember this. Read on. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter uh -huh. or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are, near, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her. Somebody's like, damn. That's in there. Damn. Come on. To uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. So wait a minute. So in her lifetime. So I just got to wait on her to drop dead and I can go get the other one. I'm joking. But the point is, is that these are all forms of fornication. Read on though. Watch this. Verse 19. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness, as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. So when she's having her monthly min minstrel, you cannot go near that woman. This is on the same level of dealing with a woman or two women at the same time. God looks at that the same way. Same way he looks at dealing with somebody that's a near kin. Same way he looks at dealing with your mother or your father. He looks at all these things on an equal plan for you. Watch this. Read on. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Come on. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So what's another form of fornication? Abortion. 
that falls up under the law of fornication because what happens? You go out, you commit fornication, a baby is conceived, and then guess what? Somebody's now thinking, I need to get rid of this. This is a problem. But guess what you're doing? You're just as bad as somebody that laid with two women. What you're doing is just as bad as somebody that slept with somebody that was a near of kin. Read on. Uh, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Wait a minute. So that's also the same as being a homosexual. God looks at you all the same. Read on. It is abomination. Come on. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Mm -hmm. Neither shall any woman stand there. Excuse me. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. It is the same thing like lying with a beast, like lying with a, 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 the same sex. All of that stuff is the same with the most high. So you may say, well, oh, well, all I did was I laid with a woman and her sister. No, no, no. He look at you just like you laid with a man. And if you're a woman, he look at you just like you laid with a beast. It's all the same. Now drop down to, drop down to verse 29. Verse 29. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations. Whoever should do any of these things. Any of them. All of them are the same to him. He said, if you do any one of these things, come on. Even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. So he said he will cut you off from being among your people, meaning you won't be Israel no more. That's why when you read in uh, Romans chapter 9, he says, they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Guess what? You can lose your Israelite status. You can lose your nationality based on the way you act. And you can become a heathen. So watch this. Now go to. Let me get Sirach 15, 13. Let's see, because he said, it's an abomination unto the Lord. Let's see how he feels about abominations. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 13. Come on. The Lord hateth all abomination. He does what? The Lord hateth all abomination. The Most High God hates every one of those abominations. He called each one of these things an abomination. So when you're killing your child, that's an abomination. Which is also fornication. When you kill it, that falls up under fornication. All of these things, lying with a beast, that falls up under fornication. Lying with the same sex falls up under fornication. And he hates every last one of those actions. But guess what he did? He gave you a defense mechanism to fight them. The fringes, like especially with fornication. Because a lot of times people will commit fornication and then take the fringes off to do it. And then get done and then put the fringes back on. Let you know that fringe was nowhere in their mind. They wasn't thinking about them fringes. That that was just a, it was a fashion statement. It was just like taking off Jordans and throwing them over there. Then get done and put your Jordans back on. That's how they look. It's, it's nothing to you now. But no, it should be at the forefront of your mind every single day. Now watch this. Let's go to First Peter one and fourteen. First Peter one and fourteen. This is the book of First Peter, chapter 1 and verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Uh -huh. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be he holy in all manner of conversation. Read that one more time. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. So when you was in your ignorance, that, that back then in our former lusts, we committed fornication. We was out there in the world. A lot of a lot of our brothers was whoremongers. A lot of our sisters, they operated as whores. But guess what? That's our former ignorance. Right now, we should be saying, no, 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 no. Now I understand that. The Most High put me forth to be a king, or a king for your brothers, a priest for some of you brothers. Sisters, he put you on the planet to be princesses, right? You're supposed to be royalty. You're supposed to be his children, and you should behave as such. So, again, we have to change where we leave off. Uh, verse 14. Read 15. Verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So we have to be holy in all manner of conversation. We have to change. We have to convert unto who he's trying to make us into. Now, get watch this. Get Hebrews 10 and 26. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, 
There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And that's what happens, especially with a lot of brothers and sisters in the truth. This is a heavy thing that goes on inside of, of Israel, not just IUIC. This is going on Israel-wide, and a lot of people are willfully in sin. That's a willful action, because when you go out to commit fornication, that's not a oops. That's not an accident. You know, you can have an accident, like a car accident. Oh, you wasn't paying attention and you missed the stop sign or somebody blew through and they hit you. You cannot accidentally have sex. You cannot accidentally go out and lay with a beast. That's not an accident. That's something that you had to willfully think about. You had to plot. You had to plan. You had to, you had to organize things. You probably had to lie. You had to cheat. You had to do all these different things to commit that act. And each time you did it, you had on fringes. The conversation that you was having to build up to it, you had on fringes. That means you wasn't even thinking about them. <sighs> Go to Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to end it on this. Go to Hebrews chapter 6 and get verse 4. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put them to an open shame. So that's a dangerous game you're playing because that means the Most High, you come into this truth, it's only because he opened you up to the understanding of this truth. But guess what he can do? Turn that switch right off. And then you can lose all of that understanding. And you'll be right out, right back out in the world, right back in the club, right back in the crack house, right back wherever you were, right back there. And now you got seven more demons on you. But guess what he just said? It's like, read the bottom of that. Verse, uh, verse six. Yes. Seeing they crucified to themselves the son of God afresh. You crucified Christ again. That's why it says there's no more. That's why I hold this. Hold this, go back to 10 and 26, because I want, you, I want to connect that dot. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, mm -hmm. after, the, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So, connect the dot, meaning you crucify Christ afresh, but there's no more sacrifice for your sins, because Christ was the last sacrifice. Meaning, now you're not under Christ no more. Now you're on your own. Because you chose to willfully turn back. You made that decision to turn back. But guess what God did? He gave you a warning, a warning right there. It's on your body. You're wearing it every single day to warn you, to get your mind back to where it should be. Focus on those fringes. Brothers, sisters, those things are serious. It is not a fashion statement. That is a life-saving mechanism. And you're wearing it every single day. Just like people go out on the river and they put on a life vest to save their life, that's why you got on the fringes. Use them. And with that, I'm going to say shalom. Shalom. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries 
where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.